So, me and Dee are going to take a couple more minutes and share a little bit about uh, the RIPT and the AGE. Um, so, we'll do RIPT first. Here we have no, we'll set it this time. Fred Broadcasting here live. <laughs> How you doing, Mr. Rip? So far, so good. How you doing? Nah, I'm age guy. So, I like the Sizzle Rip product. Um, I like it for a bunch of reasons, but I'll tell you this about it first. This is not my opinion. This isn't Sizzle's opinion. There's over $20 million in government-funded research into this product. The National Institute of Health did a lot of the formulation. We, you know, Sizzle did its own deal. After, after we got the, the rights to work with the, the stuff, but they spent $20 million. They, are, they have 23 human trials already done. There'll be a 24th that'll be finished pretty soon, but they've discovered a lot of things about this product. You can read all in the brochure, all that stuff that it'll do for you, but they found that post-surgery, it has over 800% cellular regeneration. They found that when people would go to the gym and they're doing things like that, three times, gosh, if you, if you don't go to the gym, over 100% increase in your ability to grow muscle. If you work hard at work, you go and do a lot of physical activity, or you go to the gym, over 300% ability to generate muscle. We, we put it as this fancy packaging, and they put the guy that lips on the front there because it, it pairs really, really well as a post-workout drink. But what it originally, when they were testing this in these studies, they weren't tested on people going to the gym. They were tested on people that were 65 years and older, that had recently gone through surgery, whether it was their knee or their hip. They had these people who were not able to get out of bed for over a month in some cases, and they actually put muscle onto their body. Density, strength, the fibers, all of the things muscle related were stronger and bigger staying in bed for 30 days. I'm not saying stay in bed for 30 days, I'm just saying that if, if, if you had to, you could take the product and your muscles wouldn't deteriorate. After 30 days, if you're, if you're not eating right, if you're not <coughs> maintaining the same physical work that you were doing before, your muscles start to go away. It's very hard to put on muscle. It's very hard. Well, let me ask this. What if you had to say something about Tom Maurer, what would you say right before we bring him up? So Tom, Tom's a pretty incredible guy. Uh, we we look to him, the, the gifts that he has. We call him a genius. We 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 see the stuff that he has and all of the things that we bring to him. So we look to him as a superstar, honestly. But if you ask him, he don't take any of those accolades. His his number one saying is, "I'm just Tom." He has God-given gifts. We each do, huh? Just don't no, I'm teasing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he has God-given gifts. He's aware of the gifts that he has. He doesn't have to be here today. He doesn't have to be doing sizzle at all. When he sold his last company, he got over 300 million bucks. Put 150 in a sizzle. He could be sailing around and flying around and golfing every day. It's not his deal. He wants to be here. He wants to share his gifts and he wants to share his heart. God gave them to him and they are squandered gifts if he doesn't share them with us. So, Tom's an incredible person. Okay. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, when I first met Tom, I walked up and I said, well, glad to meet you, Mr. Meyer. And he goes, no, just Tom. And a lot of people want to godify this person. <laughs> you got a god, bro. Go to the restroom. <laughs> Indigestion egg. <laughs> that ain't all that's ripping. He said no, just Tom. And you know what? Because he knows he's 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 something that, that that God is blessed with, and God's just flowing his blessings through. He's in a situation one time where he could sit there and he could buy an island if he wanted to, and go sit there and eat bonbons and, and bake in the sun. He goes, no, that's not my God-given purpose. He goes, it is to bring God's resources back into the human body and help people get better and better and better and better. He is the chief scientist at Sizzle International and the CEO of Sizzle International. And he's right here, right now, to love on you with his wisdom and knowledge. Please welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Mallon. Right here. You are looking good. 
You need a mic. Hey. Turn the mic low. This technology is kind of tough. You guys know that around here. There you go. Well, it's nice to be heard. <laughs> What a big room of wonderful people. I told my girlfriend I was coming out here to see the Amish. She asked me, what's an Amish? <laughs> and you know, I said, pretty wonderful people. Great values, hardworking, across America. You can, you know, can't, I don't think you could think of any cross-section that wouldn't think the Amish are best craftsmen, decent, integrity. All those great God-given abilities which were put here on earth to use. We have all of them, don't we? We have so many. We all have different talents. I'm, I speak, create products. DW eats a lot. Joe does too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know their, their, their values, what they have. An island? Could I be an island? Yeah, the Queen of Tonga gave me an island. Do you know that? I went down to get a food coin, and the Queen of Tonga gave me an island. And I've never even been there. Never even went out on it. There it is, out in the water. I didn't have time enough to do that. It was very nice. She gave me an island. I don't think I'll ever go back to it. Probably be inhabited by cannibals or something like that. Anyway, I'm in Tonga. But, <laughs> but you can achieve a lot of things in life if you keep your direction on what you're doing. And that's the most important thing you can learn this. Get focused. Get into something that uh, is worthwhile, it's got merit, and then stay driven, stay focused, and do the right thing over and over and over again. If you'll do that, you're going to be successful. Successful people, what do they do? Very simply, successful people do things that other people don't want to do. That's the difference. They don't want, other people don't want to do it. They don't want to come to the meetings. They don't want to talk to somebody about a product or a business or something like that. Who's more businessy than you guys are? You're busier than bees with everything you're, you're doing when you come out here. You know how to work. You've got those great values and powers that's made this country so good. I hate to see it go in some of the, and I'm sure you do too. You see it all over, but there are lots of good people around. They just need a track to run on. Now, you guys are into horses. I know that. I've driven some of Joe's out there before. They're a lot more controlled than he is. But uh, I got to drive those. I, I grew up, we farmed on horses. My grandpa wouldn't have anything to do with tractors or anything else like that. So we farmed on horses, or we did our farming on horses. And I found out one thing real quick. If you train a horse what it should do, it'll do it. It's got to do it again and again and again. And I remember in the old, old days, not terrible, <laughs> I remember years ago, <laughs> when they used to have things called ice boxes. You know, we still talk about a phrase like the ice box, but they used to have, that's all I had, no refrigeration then. And they would have a horse with a great big wagon, Come down, the guy had a big rubber uh, pad over his back, a couple of tongs, grab a big piece of ice, throw it over his back, walk up in your house, you leave the house open in those days, walk up, go in the back of the ice box, put a slab of ice in. When he walked out, the horse was waiting for him at the next stop. He didn't have to go out and get it. It just knew the stop, so it just went down and down and down. Now, that was successful in, in doing that. We have a chance here that we can ride our horse to success. What, what is success? People are looking for what? Health? 
happiness, live a prosperous, good life. Those are the things I want, isn't it? You can't value them necessarily by money. You can value them by the good that you do with what you do. And if I can quote you one little scripture, maybe we'll from the same thing, but uh, you know, uh, when people talk about the uh, love of money, okay? And yeah, you can get so caught up into that, that type of thing. If you don't care about the money and you care about helping uh, people, then good things will happen to you and you'll have what you need in your life to be taken care of. Don't you think that, Strive? And that's what this business is about. Because you get what you want by helping them get what they want. And that's a win-win. And that's why I like this industry. But you can't race, you can have a racehorse. And I like, no, I was nervous. Not as heavy as DW was, but I was still too heavy to ride uh, in a competitive race. <laughs> but a horse can be the greatest racehorse in the world, like Secretariat, if you know that horse. And uh, if it doesn't have a track to run on, what is it? It's a pasture horse, see? With it. You gotta have a track to run on. You gotta have one that can win, that can pay off on whatever you're trying to achieve. And that's what we have here. We've got the track for you to run on. Okay? We've got it. Now, what have we got to uh, ride? The business opportunity, the products what people are in for. So who are you? You're the jockey. You've got to saddle up and ride. And if you're ready to go, boy are we ready to go too. And we're here big time. And I'm glad, like I mean I get called to court. You know what court is? Agony, torture chain. <laughs> you know the legal system is so bad in this country but it was just, I was in just had to testify that Oh, and they call it, and then you can't get out of it. You get out of it. So, Joe would call up, said, can you come out and speak? I said, sure, I can. And then I get a summons to appear in court to testify in this case. I have to go. I was there yesterday. This time, yesterday, I was there testifying. I got done, went back to my office. There's no, no way. Harrisburg, you know, it's... A little off the path for as far as the airlines go. So I went back to my office, did some things, got a ride on the car to the railroad station, took a train up to the airport, got off in the airport, went up there, got on the flight about 11 o'clock at night, flew for four hours or so to Detroit, got to Detroit, had a five or six hour layover, Tried to sleep while well, two women talked about a dog for about three hours. <laughs> <laughs> never learned so much about a dog that I never wanted to learn in my life. <laughs> and so then they kept waking me up. I, I try and go to sleep. They can hey, sir, have you missed your flight? No, I'm just laying over all night trying to sleep. <laughs> so then I got on that and I came in here. And Ray picked me up and took me up to the room and got sort of ready, came down. But why did I do that? I'm the president of the company. Tom's the CEO. But I'm the president. Because my role is in developing great products and show, helping you how to market them successfully. And I could I have sent somebody else? You bet. But when Joe called, said I need you, I'm coming. Why? Because I'm dedicated for you. For those of you that know me well, or have been out, stayed in my place, shot some of my elk, <laughs> rolled my ATV over, <laughs> and a few other things. <laughs> you know one thing, we have a lot of fun, we're just like each other. That's why I have some doctorates, I've been knighted in a couple countries, sir, you can call me sir, sir, call me. Well, you don't have to, but you know you have to come out. But, <laughs> but all of those things are meaningless because it's what you are inside. It's what your heart is. What you can do. I'm Tom, okay? So come to me, Mr. Martin, don't call me that. You know, I'm Tom, like you. Joe's 
Joel, right? Well, you know, Joel is definitely Joel. It's very good name. But this is a business where we're going to really start to become successful right now because what do people want? In this world where everything is, it's a world of opposites, isn't it? Good, bad, hot, cold, light, and they call it that, that sort of thing, darkness. All of those things balance us out in what we do. And we all have those same basic desires, but we have to do something about it. But if you're looking at the power of one, this is your power. We are number one. That's your symbol, okay? You have the power of one. You are the one. But you have got to get that one, that one, that one, that one to do it. And they do the same. And if you have the power of mathematics, who do you think was the greatest network marketer in the world? Have any idea? Moses is wandering around the desert out there with all the children of Israel. And he comes to Jethro, his father, who was an Arab. He said, I'm going crazy. Everyone's coming and talking to him. I don't know how to handle this. And he said, organize tens over tens over tens. And he did it. Solved. Great nation out of that. Organization, you can have a lot, but unless you get organized and you build a business in an effective way of doing it, you're not going to really be successful, are you? Because you can only do so much. You are limited. But when we do multiplication, five, they get five is 25, to five more 125, five more 625, five more 3,100. And 25. Five more is 15,000. Now look at that. How many people could you help with the power of one if you did what you had to do? But you have to have a track to run on. And you have to know how to do it. That horse has to know when you walk in the house with that cube of ice, it goes to the next stop. Okay? So you need to know where to go. You need to be able to run that track to make those things happen. But it's pretty tough doing if you don't have the right things going for you, isn't it? The right support. And that's the nice thing about this. I like people supporting people. That's the beautiful thing. What is this world all about? It isn't that. So if you have that kind of thing going, then we have an opportunity here. If we have the right thing, we can catch lightning in a bottle. Just like that. Now maybe some of you like DW might be bending over and getting somewhere else. But that's a wake-up call for him. <laughs> but the important thing is we've caught lightning in a bottle. We've got something that no one else on earth has. And we're here today to tell you about it and some of the great things that are happening. But here's the thing I'd like you to keep in mind. Some of you are pretty good there, probably. This is it. Back one. Or what? The death of aging. Doesn't that sound good? The death of aging. Yeah, I don't like death, but the death of aging, I love it. Because we've got the way to do it. We haven't got the way to do it. It's within our bodies. We have that within us. All we need is the proper types of certain types of natural ingredients to make that body function the way it optimally could. And it's a lot like a motor on a car. If you have a motor on a car, you go so many miles. Oh, sorry. Got an old great horse. Let's get more into <laughs> A horse wears out, doesn't it? You get another one. Those car people. Uh, I'm a horse person, too, but I usually get bucked off more than I ride. <laughs> but uh, the point of it is, if you have a car engine, and it wears out. What do you do? Well, you have to get another car, see, with it. But suppose that car engine would repair itself as it was running all the time. Then what would it do? It would run forever, couldn't it? The potential with this, within us is to virtually, now, it's conceivable to run almost forever, not eternity, but, you know, a couple hundred years, would that sound pretty good to you? Yeah, think of all the elk you could shoot. That kind of thing. Think of all the food you could eat. 
couple of hundred years is the potential right now. They map the human genome, you know, what that is, and uh, they found that we have the potential within us to live between 120 and 150 years. So why do we die at 75 or 80, average lifestyle? Because aging is not a disease. You see this, you die of some disease due to decay and degeneration. That's what's happened to you. You don't die of old age. Nobody dies of old age. If you were, anybody here 120 other than DW? Nobody. <laughs> okay? So, nobody dies of old age. So if you die, if you could live to be 150, you'd die at 75, where'd you die of? Middle age? That's really what they're saying. You're just worn out. Now, how about if you could just keep that going? As the things that wear out, it's repaired all the time. And the things that get expended, just like if you have a big sunflower, you have so many seeds, throw them out, okay? And once you're out of seeds, then you have to generate some from that, they're not your seeds. But how about if you can generate seeds as fast as you replace, or threw them out, that sunflower would have seeds forever, wouldn't it? That's the whole thing. The ability within us to do it. That God-given ability that we have when people that are younger, they have all that energy, don't they? Toddlers, teenagers, too much energy there. With it, but have all that energy. How quick do they heal when they get hurt? And all of those things, because their body is running at the max. But as it runs, it takes in oxygen. It takes in uh, energy source, like a gasoline motor. It takes in gas, energy source, oxygen explodes it, creates energy. You do the same thing in your cells in a different term. Glucose is your energy. Oxygen is oxygen. In the cells, they are reacted, and it creates energy. What kind? Electrical energy. Okay? If I had a wand and I could come and touch it just like this and take your electrical charge off, you'd be a pile of ash. Just like that. Everything that we have for energy is just like light. Sort of almost like scripture, you know. And let, let people see your light, you know. So, but it's like light because it's all converted. And where does it come from? Think of this for a second. I'm not leaving this sign up. Think of this. Where does... All life on earth, not granted, given from God, according to his divine plan, but how does he do it? He sends it down from the sun. Down come cosmic radiation, and you know what's in it? Hydrogen. That's what it is. Hydrogen from the sun. And the plants in your field take it and split those photons off and convert it into chemical energy. So the energy from solar energy becomes converted to chemical energy in the food that we eat. That's where our body works. And then that goes to the body to be changed from chemistry to chemistry. But like Einstein said, I think you said it too, Joe, but anyway, Einstein said, you can change the form of energy, but you can never destroy it. So listen to this scenario. See if this makes sense to you. I'm talking more about products. I'll talk about a few other things here pretty quick. But suppose the solar energy comes out to convert to chemical energy. And it goes, it builds our tissues. It creates the energy. It goes through the cells in our body. They're little electrical generating entities. Now they duplicate themselves and they produce things that we need. Bone, muscle, tissue, hormones, all those types of things it's doing. But they're producing so how do they do it? Electricity. And so that chemical energy that comes into the cell, certain types of it are used for different things, but one form goes in and it creates the energy molecule, what they call the energy molecule of the body, which is NAD+. That's a holds up to the whole thing. It's not important. But NAD+, then if you've heard, <laughs> it has, but um, creates ATP. 
ATP. They say, well, that's the energy molecule of all. No, it isn't. That's another form of the chemical energy. But from there, it's converted into what we call biological hydrogen. And what did that come from? The sun. God given sun rays. So that hydrogen comes down, converted from form to form to form to form, and then it comes back in the cells. After it's gone through all plants and animals and everywhere, it comes into your cells and it's released then, and it turns into electrical energy. And that's what powers you. You're powered because of the energy that comes down from the sun with that. So over a period of time with that explosion, a little micro explosions going on, you get a little oxidation like rust. Okay, you know what rust is, don't you? And you rust, you're slowly rusting away. And so the body, when you're young, you're keeping up with it. But then you get to about 25, and those forces that grew you stop. Forces start to slow down. Then it's the downhill slide. You go up pretty fast. And it's a downhill slide. And the further you go, the faster it is. It's like a sleigh ride down a seat field. And by the time you get to the bottom, imagine how Joe would be or DW, it'd be like grease lightning going by. You walk <laughs> off like a velocity. <laughs> so, anyway, when that happens, we start wearing out. And, and so we come back into this basic premise we have here. Let's just go back one more here. So if you die of a disease or a condition, it's due to decay and degeneration. The Food and Drug Administration, who says what we die of, so to speak, usually is government incompetence, yeah, but other than that, uh, they say they die, nobody dies of old age. They might say they died of something incidental to age, you see? But usually you die of a heart attack, stroke, you know, diabetes, some things like that. You do. Why doesn't that happen when you're 20, 25? Once in a while, rarely, when there's an abnormality. It doesn't happen because the body can rebuild it as fast as it can, as fast as it's damaged. And so scientists were taking a look at this phenomenon and at Harvard Medical School, which is the most prestigious medical school, school in the world, and they found out that within the stem cells, that's the sunflower that spits out the seeds and makes the crops. And within it, you got, you got stem cells everywhere. You got stem cells in your hair. You got stem cells in your beard. You got stem cells in your joints, in your bones. All these stem cells are producing new cells because they wear out. So you have young skin. Your cells are replaced about every month. But in your heart or your lung, this can last for years. See? The brain? I don't know. Some people have lost most of them. But, uh, <laughs> but there's all a rate of turnover. And so if you can't replace them as fast as they're lost, what happens to your functionality? Yeah, you go down. And pretty soon, you get to a point of where some disease kicks in because you're vulnerable that kills you or you live a debilitating life in a nursing home or someplace that assisted care system. But suppose you could take someone and you could do, every time he lost a stem cell, you could replace one. Now, I don't know how old Joe is, but 90? 99. I got it. 99. So Joe, 99. So now he's losing so many stem cells, and if we replace one for his age is, then what happens to him? He stabilizes. Where's that? But would you like to be like Joe and stabilize in that point? Of course not. You want to be at a higher elevation. And so if we could get him producing two stem cells for every one he had every day, what would happen to him? He would live longer and he would grow younger, wouldn't he? Does that make sense? I'm trying to make common sense because 
these scientific words and things, you got to extrapolate them and be able to understand them. So if you take a person whose muscles are wasting away, they start producing more muscle cells than they're losing. What happens to their muscles? They get bigger. They get stronger. And so when Harvard was looking at this, they found, they got within the stem cells, because the stem cell is the one that is the master one that keeps producing. It's the chicken that lays the eggs. Guys, you remember that. Rooster can crawl all they want, but it's the hen that delivers the goods. Remember that. <laughs> so, anyway, with that, <laughs> with that, isn't that true, ladies? Yeah. Right? We appreciate you. Um, but the, the thing is, they got into the, the stem cells, and they could, now science is advancing so much, they can see and they can test for things that wasn't possible before. And they found out this mechanism of creating energy. They knew it was wearing out the stem cells. They knew the stem cells were uh, deteriorating. When you have a young stem cell, it's round, it's like an egg, with the yolk, the nucleus in it, and it's pretty good. Then when that stem cell starts to decrease, get old and withered, and all those kinds of things, it shrinks in, and it doesn't function as well. And then some of them become very sluggish. They don't produce much. Some of them die off. Some of them become entirely dormant. And so what are you? You are what you can do, what you can produce. And if those stem cells can be taken and they can be replaced, they can be repaired, they can be regenerated, what have you done? All you need to do is end the decay. And when you get the fact that you increase the rate of cellular regeneration above the degeneration, you have the potential to stop the aging process, reverse the effects of aging, and live longer, support biological functions and factors as if you were in your 20s again. And that's what they found. They found in Harvard Medical School, doesn't matter what your age, within a certain period of time, most of your biological indicators that they would test for were operating like you're in your 20s again. Does that sound good? I like that. In your 20s again? And that's what you can do. So if you do that, if you end the decay and increase the rate of cellular regeneration, what are you? You are becoming what you were. You are returning to your peak. And that's one of the reasons that people lose a lot of weight on this. Now, obviously, you need to up your dosage a little bit here. <laughs> but the reason that you do is you burn so much fat. Of course, you double up the cafeteria. Mark Singer's around with you. Oh, yeah, thank you. So anyway, if you do that, then you start creating more than you're losing. And every day you wake up younger. You see? So that's pretty easy. So you can do that. He don't have, let him have any day. You're becoming more of a chick every day, and he's becoming an old. <laughs> so be what you want to be. Now you can. So here's what they did. It took some, if you look at this, you die of a disease, if you end decay, it's, and the disease is due to decay and degeneration. If you end the decay and increase the cellular regeneration above the degeneration, you've ended aging. You have, it's the death of aging. And they found that in all of the studies they did on animals, and they're doing them on humans too. We'll go into that, Joe. But anyway, with, uh, with when they started them on animals, they could look at the, their cells. And they, they, the first one was a mouse study. And they did, had mice live about two years. Seems like they live forever in your farm business when you got something out there, but they have a two year lifestyle. So, about two years, mice start to die. So, they took a group of mice, there were, happened to be a couple hundred of them, 
and they were right at the tumor end where they were starting to die. So they took this ingredient they found that the cells were making, and they found a way to get the ingredient in nature, which is produced actually in our body, and you can refine it from natural sources. And if you fit it to, to these mice, those stem cells started to repair because they had that God-given energy in them. And they started repairing themselves. And that crinkled up shape started getting bigger. And the cells become better, better looking. I'm not saying it'll work for you, Joe. But it, they become a lot better looking. And then what they found is within like three or four months, they had a group of young mice that were about five or six months. And they didn't have it. And at that period of time, they came together, and the old mice were indistinguishable from the young mice. The muscle they had lost, the, the hair that had gone gray, the hearing that was gone, the brain size that had shrunk, the eyesight that had gone away returned. And if you mixed the group together, you could not tell an old mouse from a young one. So they went into further animal studies, and they got somebody like D.W. to do it. Now, with further animal studies, they found out that it worked on all animal species. It's a God-given thing. This is the way the, the world works within our mechanism. So every animal species that they tested it on, it, the mechanism was the same. And so then they got to the point where they started testing on humans. And they found out that humans, their biological factors, of course we're bigger, need to keep track of, their biological factors started to improve significantly. And they were going back in time. They were 60, going down to the 50s, into the 40s, into the 30s, and many of them were going into the 20s. The biological factors, can you imagine that? Energy comes up. I, I, that's one thing. For those of you using it, you notice within about a week you see a significant improvement in energy. Why? You're doing regenerating. You're like a young adult again. You're back there where your biochemistry is firing up like that. So, guess what uh, they did? Let's see if I've got, what's it got here I can follow? So, okay, and then we'll go to the next, the next thing, but here's what they did. They looked at it, and they found that mutagenic damage, you know what mutagenic damage is? Like cancer, you know, it happens from a lot of factors. They found out it would repair it as fast as it was happening. And so what did they do with that? Go to medicine? No. They went to NASA, the space agency. Because the space agency wants to send a man to the moon. I'd like to also. But, uh, but they want to send a man to the moon. But they can't. Because the cosmic radiation comes right through the ship, through a space chute, through your body, and out the other side. And you just look like Swiss cheese if you, you go up there. The longer you go up. If you go up for a year on an orbit around the Earth, I don't know, you think the world's flat or round? It's round. Hey, it didn't look. Okay. But anyway, if you go up and start orbiting around the Earth, you're up a year, you come back five years later, over. You've aged five years in one year, and 100% of you will get cancer. They do it. 100% will get cancer. That's from one year mission. And so, what they did is they said, this repairs cosmic radiation. Fast as that happens, it fixes it. I said, you can send a man to Mars. And, and why do you think they couldn't? Because that, that's a three to five year mission, and everybody that goes out, nobody comes back. You see? Because they're all killed from cosmic radiation. We have radiation as oxidation. You understand that? Mutagenic damage. So they said, now you can send a person into space for five years, and they could come back decades younger. Decades. Can you imagine that? It's a long time. 
So you get younger and younger and younger. And that's what we have. So now we have that mechanism. And we found out we've, what we've done is I've been researching this heavily for many years. It started with the Chinese many years ago. There's a couple of Chinese physicians. One lived 239 years, one lived 246 years. And it's all recorded in Chinese history. And they celebrated their 150-year birthday. Yeah, we're all recorded. How'd they do that? This basic thing that made this ingredient was in one of the supplements that they had made, natural medicines that they had done. So, with that, I have a picture of the guy that's 246. I'll show you if it Joe's up next to you and try and guess which one's which. But anyway, 246 years. If you can imagine that. How did he do that? They said the potential is to live to be 120 to 150. So how did he live 100 years longer than that? What they had is they had the ability to repair the damage and regenerate the cells and end the decay. And they went on and on and on. And based upon that science has been more advanced. We've looked at it and we've got it. And we've got it so the cells can make it yourself just by eating the right supplement. Yeah. And then you have to say, what happens in a stem cell? It's like a little factory. It takes in nutrients. It creates energy. It forms something. But in the process of doing it, they have to oxidize glucose. Now, that's sugars, you know. And so it's like gasoline. When you oxidize gasoline, what do you get? Carbon monoxide, don't you? Out of that. And some other things that are toxic. When you oxidize glucose, and they'll film, glucose forms plaque, like on your teeth. And it plaques up the internal part of the cells, coats the proteins and things like that. So as it's exploded, glucose becomes uh, glucose oxide. And as a result, it attaches to proteins and it films it. So your biological function in your body goes down. That's the second point. Nobody's done this. But I found the science to do it. And I've got the compounds that we can put in there. And it removes that plaque buildup just like on your teeth. It removes it so it's not there to do it. Now, the other thing we, we have with it, we have powerful antioxidants. I mean, really powerful ones. And so they're neutralizing the decay. But then the third thing that happens is like you build a house. I think a lot of you are familiar with that. You bring a lot of materials in, you cut it, you prepare it, you finish concrete, everything you're doing. When you're done, you got a lot of garbage there, don't you? You got to haul up. It's the same thing with the cell. As it takes in these nutrients, produces whatever it's doing, not everything that comes out it is used, and that which isn't has to be excreted, and when that happens, not all of it gets out of the system. So what you start building up is cellular garbage. It's called lipofusion. It's sludge. And so your cells, they start getting yellowish and orange and everything else like that. So we have the, con how does the body do it? It produces enzymes. So I found the ingredients that could produce the enzymes to break down the sludge, to help to dilate those cells so they can release the garbage. No plaque, no garbage, and huge amounts of cellular energy. Now, what's that going to do for you? Rewind those telomeres so they, they can just keep duplicating. How long are you going to live? Anybody? 100 years, how many want to live? 100 years, 150 years, how many? Okay, how long do you want to live? I think you pick your time. Do you have it? Well, you can pick it more. If I could, if I could pop on another 50 or 75 years, and I could live in my, if I was in my 20s or 30s again, I'd do it, wouldn't you? You probably wouldn't. But wouldn't you? We have the potential to do that. This God-given power, this lay dormant that the ancients knew about, we have today, and you and you alone have it. And there's no other competition. We'll overhaul those cells with this compound. It'll make them activate like they're in their 20s again. They'll clean up. 
they'll, be, they'll become indistinguishable from young cells. And then we can trigger more new cells to be produced. Ones that are dormant can be made active, active again. All of those kinds of things can be done in one product. So you tell me this. I'm going to break. They keep showing this big zero sign. First I, first I thought it was, it was Amish for your unzip, but I guess it was zero. And anyway, uh, so anyway, you, you tell me this. <laughs> Think about it for a second. If you could choose to live longer and grow younger or not, just to live shorter and to accelerate faster. What is your choice? Is this not the single greatest product in the history of human health? What compares to it? Nothing. This is the big one. And you've got it. So, I have a lot more to say here, but I'm through. Uh, for now. When Katie tells me, I no, I go. But anyway, I didn't mean to go back. I'm just going you know, through. Okay, so I want to, I don't know what I'm doing next, but I'm here to serve you. I come here today because I care about you. And I'll be back again and again and again. Because my success in life is based upon your success. That's how I get my reward. It's not what I make. It's what I see you do with your lives, because I know my life is having a positive effect on you, and your lives are having a positive effect on others, and I love this business. So, thank you, everybody.